Just introducing the game here is Giants vs Bears. I just want to go through the stats for both teams before the game plays. It's up to week four now, so the stats should be pretty right. I'll go through the Giants stats for the moment. Okay. So basically they get 20.24.3 points per game um, and that's pretty low for the teams that are playing. Um, they get 227 yards per game in passing and that's low as well. They get 1.33 passing touchdowns per game. And 1.33 interceptions. Passing touchdowns is low, interceptions is high, so it's not a very good passing offense. Um, rushing offense is the best yards per game for rushing. Uh, it's got high, got, gets one touchdown per game rushing. But it has 1.33 fumbles per game as well. So it's a good rushing attack, but too many fumbles. Defensive wise, they got get high scores scoring against them, 32.3 points per game scoring against them. Yards per game passing is 356. So it's very easy with passing defense to, to pass against for the Giants. Um, Three touchdowns passing per game um, is average for them, so it's hopeless their passing defense. Interceptions per game is none, they haven't got an interception so far. Um, yards per running per game in defense is pretty standard, so it's average that 91 yards per game. No rushing touchdowns against, so this is very good, the rushing touchdown defense. And 0.33 fumbles per game, so they're not getting that many um, fumbles for them. So that's like the Giants. So I'll go to the Chicago now. They make 31.6 points per game, so that's the highest in the league. Um, yards per game total is 358.6, that's the second highest. Touchdowns passing is three per game, so that's very, that's the best any team's got, so that's exciting, three touchdowns passing per game. Interceptions per game is 0.66, so that's kind of average. Um, yards rushing per game is uh, 166, so they've got good rushing as well. Like, excellent rushing as well. Um, touchdowns rushing is 0.66, so that's kind of right. Get a few uh, touchdowns, like that's average kind of. Fumbles per game is 0.66, so that's really good as well. Defensive score against is 26, so that's average on uh, average defense scoring against. Yards passed against is 289, so that's average as well. Passing touchdowns per game is 2, so that's average as well. So it should be 2 touchdowns. Interceptions per game is 1.33, that's the best um, interceptions per game for any of the teams. Um, so that's really good. Um, yards rushing per game is 81 against, so that's the best rushing defense. Rushing touchdowns is 0.6, so that's average kind of, and 0.3 fumbles is kind of average per game to, to, 
to get for, for the team. So there are all the stats. Let's get on with the game. Hello everyone, I'm Larry Ridley and you're tuned in to Madden 18 on EA Sports. In today's matchup, we've got a pair of running backs who are hoping for plenty of touches come their way. It's Jordan Howard's Bears going up against Paul Perkins' Giants. For the call, let's send you out to the broadcast booth where we'll join our commentators, Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. Thank you, Larry. Coming to you from just off the New Jersey Turnpike in East Rutherford, we are just about set for football on EA Sports from MetLife Stadium. This the scene just before we came on air. This New York crowd fired up by the arrival of their G-men as they burst from the locker room. They're ready to go as the Giants get set to match up with the Chicago Bears. Hi again, everyone. I'm Brandon Gordon. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. With me, as always, Charles Davis. And, Charles, we look at a matchup like this. It's really the running backs that may take center stage here today. And in today's football, they're still valuable, not just as runners, but guys who can catch the ball as well. It's really the number of touches that determines things these days. The Giants' new kicker for 2017, Aldrich Rosas, will get us started as off we go from MetLife Stadium. Set to return now, here's Deontay Thompson. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. So here are the Bears now for their opening drive. The NC State man Mike Glennon leading them out there in his fifth season in the National Football League. Mike Glennon was 5-13 as a starter in Tampa Bay. Hadn't played very much since 2014 for them when he had been beaten out by Jameis Winston. But guess what? A great opportunity for him in Chicago to be a starter again. Although the Bears did draft Mitchell Trubisky with the number two pick in the 2017 draft. play action here on first down and he can't get away from the pressure the Giants get there Dalvin Tomlinson able to swap him from that defensive tackle spot for a loss of five and we say it all the time have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that you have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. A 
first carry now for Jordan Howard. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And they're going to have a third down. In today's NFL, when you get teams in long yardage situations with your defense, you're really going to go to your speed packages. You're going to get smaller, lighter guys on the field in order to cover the expected pass. So they might want to run the ball against a smaller, lighter lineup with your big guys, and that's exactly what happened on that play. It was tough on them, and now instead of being in third and very long, they ended up setting themselves up in third and manageable. They've got a chance at a first down. Glennon. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Jason Pierre-Paul in there to get him for a loss of nine, and that'll lead to fourth down. Great job defensively. Trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. Job defensively, nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. Here's Pat O'Donnell to punt in his fourth year from Miami. Back deep for the Giants, Dwayne Harris. <laughs> Spins by. Oh, and now he bowls him over. 12 yards on the return that time. And it'll be Giant football first and 10. One of the shockers in the NFL in week six came because of the New York Giants as their offense takes the field and that man Eli Manning made his 205th consecutive start in that game that ties in with Michael Strahan for the most in Giants history but how about that victory that was amazing because think of all the players the Giants were down in that game especially in the receiving core because before the injuries those Giants receivers for Eli Manning 1,435 combined catches for 138 touchdowns and entering that game against Denver, 27 games worth, 19 catches and three touchdowns, and they fashioned a win on the road against the Broncos. Now Manning, and getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. It's a gain of 13 for number 13, and it gives him a first down. I don't care who you put on him, he's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. No gain on the play there. Second down. And the offensive starters for the New York Giants. Brandon Marshall's always been productive in the NFL. It doesn't matter what team he has played for. But now that he's moving from the Jets to the Giants, and he had a little bit of a down year in 2016 with the Jets, count on that competitive fire to really come to the front. They'll pair him with Odell Beckham Jr., giving him two large receivers on the outside who can flat out run and create home run throws. Now Manning throwing on second down. Now they go screen. It's complete. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 47. It'll be a loss of one. And that's going to lead to a third and 11. Time to give a little credit here. That was an excellent read by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Oh, you're crediting your defense. You Got to credit them on that one because they tried to fool them, right? Tried to trick them. Ran a screen. And they went to it and smothered it for a loss of yardage. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Shotgun now for Manning. To Vereen out in the flat. And eventually taken down, but how about that athletic spin move we saw? Gives him the first down yardage. 17 yards on the pick up there. The drive will continue. It's a first down. I feel like Eli Manning has just gone from downfield bomber to a guy who can complete everything. He can hit him underneath now, yeah, can Yeah, we just saw that there with that pass completion. The maturity of a veteran taken with a defensive given.
Here's Perkins on first down. Takes this to the 32, maybe the 31, as the defense rallies quickly after the nice move. Now give him four yards there. It'll be in six. The starting 11 defensively for the Bears. The Chicago Bears defense in 2016 was right in the middle of the pack overall, ranking number 15 in total defense. But what hurts their pride? Number 27 against the run. And in the Windy City, where toughness is at a premium, that's not going to stand for very long. They want to get back to their old ways and shut that down. Again, they go to Perkins, finding room to the 20, and he's brought down. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. That O-line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only are they controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to the linebacker spot, the secondary spot, getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. Into the red zone now, Manning. And he held on to it too long. A coverage sack. Down he goes. Mitch Unrein in there to sack him for a loss of six. And it's never good to take a sack. You really don't want to take one down here in this part of the field down near the red zone. Not at all because you're already pretty much assured of a field goal. But you take a big sack, it could push you out of range. And that's why defenses get a little more aggressive in this situation. They're almost conceding the three points. They want to push you back and try and take you out of that. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. Second down, Perkins. And they won't fare much better here as he maybe gets back to the line. No gain on the play this time, and it'll be a third and long situation coming up. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom, quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. Third and long, it's Manning. Gonna throw deep for the end. And Ingram's got it. Touchdown, Giants. Evan Ingram, a 22-yard touchdown ground. And the Giants are gonna take a first quarter lead. And the QB rating right now sky high. Four for four on that opening drive, and it ends with a touchdown pass. Yeah, I don't know quite how to figure it out. I think I need my friends from MIT to come in and help. I think 158.3 is the number one. Yep, that's the, right? high that's the highest you can get. That's where he is. He'd like to continue on that pace. Rosas on for the extra point. It's up, it's good, and the Giants have a 7-0 lead. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it was finished off by a touchdown by the New York Giants. Rosas now to kick this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. 
Well, we got a second here before this next drive starts. It seems like every week we're talking injuries, and we had three quarterback shoulder injuries from this last week. Yeah, and it's really unfortunate because we're talking about some of the most recognizable players in the league. Jameis Winston really coming on as a young quarterback. Trevor Simeon, captain of the Denver Broncos and won the job for a second year in a row. And of course, Aaron Rodgers may be the best quarterback in the league. You know, Rodgers probably gone for the season. Winston, I think they could have brought him back, but they were cautious with him and kept him out of the game. And Simeon did play in the second half in their loss to the Giants. Yeah, that's the good news. Two of the three able to return. Unfortunately for Rodgers, not looking so good. He's got a man open. It's Cameron Meredith. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A nice pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. That was a run slant route and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. On first down they run with Howard. <laughs> And he'll grab a gain of five out of this up to the 41-yard line. Chicago offense will look like this. And in the backfield, you mentioned Tree Cohen threw for a touchdown pass last week for Chicago. The total in the backfield, 231 yards for their tailback. They're built for it, right? Jordan Howard, who was the second leading rusher in the NFL in 2016, he'll get bulk of carries. You mentioned Tariq Cohen. What a great changeup guy he is. But this offensive line, Back intact, Kyle Long back at full speed now. He and Josh Sitton, as good a pair of guards as you're going to find in the league. And they are built to be power blockers, and that takes the pressure off of the rookie quarterback, Mitchell Trubisky. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that'll make it third down. Every year I go to the combine and marvel at the speeds that linebackers are running nowadays. They run like DBs, and let's face it, they know how to finish plays, too. Eyes up, head up, run right through them. Five in the secondary now for the Giants on third down. Now Glennon. Over the middle, that's caught by Meredith. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs and you tend to stall them out when you do that. And they won't risk defending a return here. That one's out of bounds and it'll be spotted. Spotted at the 14-yard line. Offensively for the Giants, all the injuries that they've had, particularly at wide receiver, yet still able to win that game against Denver with the replacements. <laughs> I love how you phrased that. That's absolutely perfect. Because did you know Ed Egan before that game began? I could lie to you. <laughs> did you remember Tavares <laughs> King had actually been selected originally by the Denver Broncos? So he was able to go back and get a little bit of revenge against them. Big time deal, but Roger Lewis is a guy to keep an eye on. He's really playing well at wide receiver for the Giants. Now a play fake here on first down. Looking for Marshall, but it's intercepted. Manning picked off by his former teammate, Prince Amukamara. They told us repeatedly earlier in the week in our meetings, we need some plays from our defense here on the road early. They got one. And don't think they were above all week long pointing out to their defense. Their defense is rated higher than them. You got to let that happen, guys? Is that how we're going to play? And they responded to the challenge. Really nice starting field position here for the offensive unit. Two, 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 
Lennon hands this one to Howard. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. The Giants defense, who was so great in week six, especially that D-line, Jason Pierre-Paul had three sacks in that game alone. Yeah, the team themselves got four. Had a fumble recovery, two interceptions, including a pick six. When you evaluated that game going in, did you get the sense that the few stars the Giants have left available to play really needed to play well? And JPP led the charge, didn't he? to throw here on second and 10. And he's going to go down. They sack him back right around the 30. B.J. Goodson coming on the blitz. He gets him for a loss of seven. I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. And some secondary help here for the defense in the nickel on third and long. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. Under pressure again, and down he goes again. Jason Pierre-Paul in there to drop him, and back-to-back -back sacks now bring up fourth and long. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Connor Barth now for the Bears field goal. From the right hash, this from 53. And this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. Before this next offensive drive gets going, you know, we still have two 0-6 teams in the NFL, the 49ers and the Browns, and you're looking at me because I, I know you made a prediction that <laughs> one of these two teams would win this past week. Yeah, we had the Giants in there going into it as well, right? We had the Giants, 49ers, and Browns, and I predicted that the Browns would be the first to get off the schneid. Instead, it was the Giants. So the Browns looking at me a little crooked eye, aren't they? <laughs> like, hey, just leave us alone and let us play. Don't make any more predictions, man. They'll let Perkins carry to start the drive. And he'll take this one across the 45 up to about the 46-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. Now, prior time has run out on the first quarter of play. 7 0 is our score. EA Sports NFL Sunday returns following this. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden, and it's the Giants with the football here as we begin quarter number two. They face a second and seven to start things out. again and he'll fight his way forward to about the 48 yard line call it a gain of a couple and that's going to leave him with a third and about five i do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game you're now doing the dictating on defense and guess what now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time but you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt
So third and five, defensively expecting pass. They've got six DBs out there. Working from the gun, Manning. It's caught, Shepard. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. Give him eight yards on the play, and they pick up the first. I'm pretty sure the Giants saw big success for Sterling Shepard coming out of Oklahoma. They could see him in their offense working in the middle of the field and making big catches. Second only to Michael Thomas last year among rookies in receptions, yards, and touchdowns. Pickup of four. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action, hit them over the top. Manning going to give it to Perkins. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. Yeah, now it's a safety that came through and made the play. But there's no doubt in my mind, he hits like a linebacker. And we see a lot of that in today's NFL, don't we? And that time, we do indeed a big hit for a loss. The Giants on third down. A perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. This is third and nine. They fake the handoff. Now Manning. And he finds a man with a crossing round. And he's going to be out of bounds down inside the 20. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Now this trio that New York has compiled... Brandon Marshall, Sterling Shepard, and of course, Odell Beckham Jr. Fits right into head coach Ben McAdoo's attack. They led the league in three wide receiver sets in 2016. the intended receiver and now it's second down sometimes the coverage is so good no matter what you're doing on offense you just can't shake anyone free they try their best to find someone open but they took away every passing alley every angle and shut the play down and here comes play number six on this drive they'll run it now out of the gun and he'll get four there, down to about the 12-yard line. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get him into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. So they need six yards here on third down. They're two for two on third down tries so far on this drive. From the gun, it's Manning. Throw left side, complete to Ingram. And he takes it inside to 10 to the 8 before he's out of bounds. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. A short game that doesn't get them the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. On fourth down, off goes Manning. And on comes the Giants kicker, Aldrick Rosas, for the field goal try. From the left hash, a chip shot here. And Rosas puts this one through. And the lead moves to 10 zip. So the drive takes him inside the 10, but it ends with just three. And a nice job defensively to rise up and make sure they didn't get in.
After the field goal, here's Rosas to kick it away. Now the return man. This is Benny Cunningham. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Mike Glennon and the Bears, oh, heading back onto the field. He's playing pretty well. I don't think it's necessarily him changing up something he's doing, but that old line, they've got to protect him better. They do. They've got to make sure that they give him more than enough time in order to find targets downfield. And sometimes what happens when these things are going on is that the, the field general will step up and say, hey, that's on me, guys. I didn't get rid of it fast enough. Anything to try and relax them a little bit and take some pressure off because they do know that they are trying. Yeah. Yeah, well, we've seen the four sacks so far in this contest. They go with Howard to begin the drive. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. We think, Brandon, I like the intensity this defense is showing right here in these first few drives. They're not just holding the line because they're doing their job, but they're doing more than that, aren't they? They're getting a nice push into the offensive backfield. And a great example right there for the loss on the tackle. one up to the 26 give him two on that run and they're still left looking at a third and about nine to go but he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far and after that last run not much is going to change in that area he hasn't been able to get anything going and really the offensive line not helping him much the bears on third down 0 for three to this point they could use a conversion this is third and nine they'll set up a throw Drops it off for Carey. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. Give him six on the play, and it'll be fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. Here's Pat O'Donnell now, as he's on to punt for Chicago. been a busy in this first half in a way. And up here, this is going to turn out to be a beauty. Down at about the line. Eli Manning getting ready to go again on offense. He's got the lead here in the second quarter. He's thrown the touchdown, but also an interception. As a quarterback, does that interception, even though you're playing while your team's got the lead, does that always stick in the back of your mind a little bit? For the best ones, it just upsets them that they did that because they don't think there should be any blemishes on their record. They think that they're way better than that. So your confidence gets tested a little bit. Being able to go back out there, maybe throw another touchdown, that'll tamp that down in a big way. Yeah, because he's looked pretty good to this point. The drive starts with a run by Perkins. And he'll find a little space. He gets this up near the 10. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets them to second and four. I think they're ahead of schedule now after that run. They might be bold with this second down call after that type of a game. the 20 and brought down but not before they're able to get it up to the 25. That one good for 16 and the drive will continue. Now this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs he's getting past the point of attack and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. Play fake. Manning. Oh, he's got a man wide open. 
open, complete. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. Now that play will end up on the highlights, and you'll see it all over the place. But what you won't see, the offensive line that bought the extra time that allowed for the big completion downfield. Those guys made that play possible. Now Manning. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. But depending on the team, they call that an explosive play or a chunk play, the one that they got on the previous one. They tried to go back and get another one, didn't they? They did, but unsuccessful on that second attempt. gun and able to push his way forward here for a good little gain give him four on the ground there they're now left with third and six well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive and once again they show passing formation showing the shotgun then they ran out of it that's a nice play by them defensively though to hold it to a short game the Giants on third down they've been near perfect four for five to this point this will be third and six now a first carry here for Shane Vereen. And he's able to get it to the 31, and that's enough for the first. Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. That's quite a spot there for his first carry of the game, but obviously they had plenty of faith in him, didn't they? No question about it. And here, why not go with the fresh legs? Able to push forward, pick up that first. Again, it's Marine. And he's going to get this one down to the 30. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Nice job by the defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. way forward here for a modest game. It's a four-yard pick up there, and it leaves him with third and five. The Giants on third down. They have been superb. Five for six to this point. This will be third and five. Coming up at halftime in a little less than two minutes, we'll send you to Orlando where Larry Ridley is standing by. He'll have highlights and analysis of this first half. And on third and five, this will be the eighth play of the drive. From the gun, Manning. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defense side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. So this will be the ninth play on this drive. Inside the red zone here. They'll look to throw. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And all the way down inside the five to the four. 
That one goes for 16 yards. It sets him up first and goal. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. It used to be occasional, right? Safety valve, throw one to him every so often, but more, mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. receivers they've gotten taller and taller but they've retained their quickness and their speed it's a lethal combination always good to have wide receivers with height Rosas to add the extra point he's got it and it's 17 nothing A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it was polished off by a Giants touchdown. Rosas now to kick this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. <laughs> and a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Jordan Howard and the rest of the offense heading back out there. They haven't been able to get him on track. They haven't been able to get this offense on track. No points so far. Maybe it's time to start doing a few different things. Throwing the ball a little bit. Maybe featuring other people touching it for a while. And then you've got a chance to come back to it when things have changed a little bit. They have to make an adjustment. There's still time for him here as we sit in the second quarter. throwing here to start the drive and the throw left sideline here is caught but they'll rule it incomplete couldn't keep his feet in second down Cameron Meredith the intended target and that'll bring up second down well let's go league wide for a second Charles Kansas City losing to Pittsburgh so no more undefeated teams remaining in the NFL the 72 Dolphins can celebrate once again I wonder if they got caught off guard a little bit that it happened this early because some years they almost go to the wire, don't they? In this case, heck, we're not even at the halfway mark, and the celebration has already begun for that team. I guess the closest was the Patriots when they lost to the Giants, but yeah, this year, no such intrigue. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. They haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. They drop to throw. Got a man, it's right. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. They're going to look to throw. Out to the flat, that's complete to his running back. Nothing on that one, it'll be second down. Second and ten now. Green 39. Green 39. Looking to throw. He leaves this one for Howard. 
And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. It'll be a gain of six, and it'll be third down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. The Bears on third down, just one for five to this point. This is third and four. Back to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you've got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. Here's Pat O'Donnell now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. This is away and a very good kick angled for the sidelines. Shane Vereen now gearing up to help lead this offense back out there. A good job in the passing game. Decent job in the running game, but really they've been more effective uh, through the air. We'll see if that shifts at all as this goes on. Thus far, it feels like they're calling this game in reverse. Normally you run to set up the pass. Here it feels like they're passing, hoping to set up the run and be more effective later on in the game. Yeah, you can do it both ways. We usually talk about it in the reverse, however. No doubt about it. Going to give to Perkins on a draw. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. Now before this second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout. As the clock will stop with 34 seconds to go before halftime. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. and We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. on the give from Manning across the 30 to the 31 yard line. Three yards on the pickup that's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. Partner we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football but these short runs they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock you control the ball and that way you often control the game. They'll run here with Marine. And he'll be brought down, but a tip of the cap on the spin move as that gives him a first down. So we've reached halftime here at MetLife Stadium with the Giants out in front as we send you down to Orlando where we check in with Larry Ridley and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Larry. So here we go. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Opening drive. Here it's a sack by JPP. This ends up as a loss of nine. Midway through the first quarter, Manning able to find his new weapon, rookie tight end Evan Ingram. And this great play will go for six as they get out to a 7 0 lead. Offense on the field now after the INT. Pierre Paul's going to take down the QB here. This will go for a loss of seven. Giants have it at the four. Manning's on target here, and it's called for the score. Giants push the lead to 17. Now the 
Collins with them here in Orlando. Let's get back up to New York as we turn it back over to Brandon Guy. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. The Giants offense now gets ready to head back onto the field. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? They score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, in fact, you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? A handoff to Perkins. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. But it was stopped on that play. We said plenty of carries all afternoon. Every now and then the defense is going to win one, but I don't think they'll shy away from handing it to him the rest of the game. So second and ten here. Watch left, watch left. Watch They'll run it now out of the gun. And once again, not much running room, if any at all. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. So nothing there. I don't know that that's all in the back, though. you got to look at blocking there, don't you? I would agree with that totally. At some point, they have to win at the point of attack. Instead, it was the defense getting it done again and holding them to no gain. The Giants on third down. They've been outstanding. Seven first downs and eight tries. This is third and ten. From the gun, Manning. And it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. And it's going to bring up fourth down. Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. But they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. The punter wing is on as he sends this one away. <laughs> We'll call that a 49-yard punt with a return of just two. And the Bears take over. Mike Glennon and the Bears, oh, heading back onto the field. And he has not really been able to have a lot of comfort back there in the pocket. Pressure's been coming at him a lot, hasn't it? And they've got to figure out how to tamp down that pressure. How do they decrease it? Is it getting rid of the football quicker? You know, shorter drops? Maybe they do something different with their pass blocking and their protection schemes. Maybe you meet them on the line of scrimmage instead of retreating to try and protect your quarterback. They've got to figure something out, though, because you cannot let your guy get hit that much. Not if you intend to win. Yeah, I know they'd like to erase that video and those four sacks that they've seen so far. They'll begin the drive with Howard. And down he goes just beyond the 35. And that pretty move got him some extra space to run. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter. No time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. Glennon gives to Howard on the draw. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. Another nice run there by Jordan Howard. And, and when we talk about fresh legs, 
How about 2016? Jordan Howard, the number two rookie rusher. Heck, the number two rusher in the NFL <laughs> behind another rookie, Ezekiel Elliott. In the first three weeks of the season, he only had 12 carries. So once week four hit, really found his groove. So the run gets him the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. Throw left side, taken in by Meredith. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Great change up there on the route and got that inside release, made it a successful pitch and catch. Well, the first thing you want to do is have him thinking that you're going outside. Make a move in that direction. Then you really don't run the route against the whole body of the defender. You run against a half of him and the inside half, and he took it right across his face, got inside, and won that route in a big way. Dumps that off to his running back, Jordan Howard. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. Well, he's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. So here we go, first and ten now. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. They give them 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. as they'll in fact tackle him behind the line. They'll wind up losing three yards here, and that'll make this a second and 13. Brandon, that play typifies what we've seen from the offense all day long. They've had no success getting things going. I think for the offensive coordinator, he's got to go to that side of the play sheet that says try something different, try some specials, something they haven't seen all day to try and get this offense kick-started. Langford is in. He gets the carry. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. And after getting tackled, he's still down and looking very slow to get up. We'll get an update when we return to MetLife Stadium. The offense on third down tonight, they've had their troubles. Just one for six. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. Here we go. Blue Blue ah. They'll look to throw here. He's got Cruz complete. And he picks up the first as he's able to take it down to the seven-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not, with his height, setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle. He can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play, but what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket 
to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything. And sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. And they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the nine. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. It's real easy to say this running game needs to be better, but the reality is they've been given little time to actually find a place to run the football. It's almost like the defense is there on the handoff. takes it from the nine to the eight. Partner, I know we're in a goal-to-go situation, but my goodness, think about running the ball here, not even a thought, is yeah, it? defensively, they're in a prime spot. And I think the defensive guys are probably expressing themselves to them as well. I wouldn't run it here, guys. You might want to try throwing it. They'll look to throw on third and goal. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. And he is in. Touchdown, Chicago. Kadeem Carey from eight yards out. And the Bears get a bit closer. That's the score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there's an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard, you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. Here's Connor Barth for the point after. And it's 17-7. So that one a long 11-play drive. And it culminates in a touchdown for Chicago. now to kick this one away. This is taken at the three. <laughs> and he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. And New York set to take the field. Certainly want to avoid what they had to do last possession. That was punt the football because this, this game's starting to tighten up. In a basketball sense, you think about taking a little bit of the air out of the ball, right? Maybe milk some clock, limit the possessions. In this case, they might want to do the same thing but control the game offensively. Put together some first downs, put together a drive, and keep it away from them. This one up to the 26. A gain of three, second down. Third quarter and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. See if they stay on the ground for second down. He'll be brought down about the 28. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. The Giants on third down. Can't fault these numbers. Seven for nine thus far. This will be third and five. Right, 
They'll run it now out of the gun. And some room to maneuver. They got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets him a new set of downs. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. Fresh set of downs here. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Now they'll throw it with Manning. Over the middle, he's got his tight end, Ingram. And oh, he coughed it up. So they escape, so to speak, maintaining the football. Defensively, though, opportunity miss. It definitely was because that's all defense is talking about. Getting the football and either advancing it the other way or just getting possession and turning it over to their offense. That could be a little bit deflating. You're exactly right. A lost opportunity. A near turnover, but the offense recovers it. Now they'll try to regroup on second. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get three down of the 34-yard line. I once had a defensive player in the NFL tell me, if I beat and dominate the guy across from me, I'm helping my team. Well, winning one-on-one -on -one battles is always a part of the game. But when you have good team defense, as we just saw there, one broken tackle, but he didn't get away because the rest of the guys arrived to put him on the ground. They'll try to pick it up with Perkins. And he's going to get to the 31, enough for the first down. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. So they run with Perkins, and he's going to be stopped dead in his tracks at the 29. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Tough day, tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. They'll run it now out of the gun. And they see right through that defensively as he'll be hit and taken down to the backfield. It'll wind up being a loss of two. And it'll be third and ten now. Count me as a little bit surprised by what we just saw there because this has been a pretty long drive. And normally you think that wears down a defense. In this case, look like the offensive line let him down a little bit. Yeah, allowed the penetration and the ability to stuff him for a loss. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we play three quarters. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Welcome back now here in East Rutherford. It's the Giants with the football and also the lead as we get set to start quarter number four.
It's been a pretty long drive. This will be play number nine, and they need 10 yards out of it on third. Shotgun now for Manning. He finds Beckham complete. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10 to the 7. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Well, that catch just gives us another reason to praise Odell Beckham Jr. Off to an incredible start to his NFL career. Three Pro Bowls, three straight Pro Bowls, obviously, and first giant to do that in more than 50 years, Charles. And how about the numbers that he's put up also? 1,300 or more yards and 10 or more touchdowns in each of those three seasons. Well, just play after play after play on this long drive for the offense. Operating from the gun. Manning. This will be caught at about the six. Only a yard in the completion. It's second and goal. That was a nice throw out there to the flat, but they defended that pretty well. The hope is to go ahead and put it on him so he can turn and get upfield and gain additional. It just wasn't anywhere to go on that play. And now for the offense, this is play number 11 here on this drive. Now Manning throwing on second down. This will be caught at about the six. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. They get only a yard there. Now it's third and goal. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense... Be aware, a ball may come your way. And a really long drive here, and it goes on and on. They come out here in the eye. the run. Here's Vereen. No gain on the play that time. So a big stop, and it's going to leave him with a fourth and goal. There are certain drives in a game where anything less than a touchdown that caps it feels like an absolute disappointment. This is one of those drives. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This is a fairly straightforward 22-yard short attempt. And the kick by Rosas is good. And that will open the lead up now to 20-7. to seven. So they settle for just the three there, but clearly anything helps when you're trying to salt one away here in the fourth. Without a doubt, I think a touchdown would have been the final nail. But three does give him some breathing room and lets him build up a little cushion. After the field goal, here's Rosas to kick it away. This is taken at his four. And a big collision there as he winds up flat on his back. Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. Last time they were out, they scored. Still trailing here, though, so some work to do. But it's okay in terms of mindset. Because they scored the last time, they're not quite as worried about being down on the scoreboard because now their confidence is a little bit higher. They feel like they've got something going, and they feel like they can attack again and put more points on the board. Are you scoreboard watching if you're the offense, or are you just focused on this drive? It, it, we wouldn't be telling the truth if we said that they didn't scoreboard watch. Everyone does it to some extent. But you've got to set it aside right now and just focus on this series. That'll take care of the scoreboard if they punch it into the end zone. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. 
So much of this game is about leverage. We always talk about low man wins in the trenches. Plus well, like that in just about every position. And sometimes if you lose that leverage and you're losing the battle, just jump up at the line of scrimmage and try and bat the ball Let's away. Go. And that's exactly what happened there. Now Glennon on the right side. This is Miller. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. That catch good for five. It's third down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? The Bears on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. This will be third and five. They drop the throw. Cruz has it over the middle. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. Fourth quarter, every drive's so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You got the first one for the second one to even matter. And the offense lining up first and ten. He'll look to throw. Glennon hit. He loses the football. It's out. And fortunately for him, he's able to get it back. But it will be a loss on the play. He got it stripped. But you can see the panic in his face from up here through the helmet. He was able to dive back on it. A good bit of fortune for him because oftentimes on a strip sack, when that ball is wrenched out of your grasp, it can go in any different direction. It can go way away from you. In this case, it didn't matter. He was able to get on it. Offense with a fumble, but they recover it, and it brings up second down. Set. Green 39! Green 39! Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. Let's go! All right, now, look at 56. They'll set up to throw. It's brought in by Kevin White. And they convert on third with a gain of 22. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. And here comes play number six on this drive. And we've got movement. I think this is against the Bears here. Let's find out. False start. Offense. So that'll back him up five. Still first down. So after the mistake by the offense, it cost him five yards. And now first and 15. Here we go now. They'll look to throw. It's grabbed over the middle by White. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. 
And that's encouraging there for Chicago Bears fans. A catch by Kevin White. Missed his entire rookie season with an injury. Only played four games in 2016. He also tried to change his luck in this season, moving from uniform number 13 to number 11, which he wore in college. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Looking left side, and he's got a man. It's Sims. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. I like how they worked the tight end on a nice little under route there. And if you're going to give him that much space, he's not even going to catch the football. He's going to run away from you a little bit. And that's exactly what he just did there, picking up extra yardage. Wheaton is the one he was looking for. That'll bring up second down. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. Now this will be the ninth play on this drive. Now here's a whistle as flags come in. And we'll check out the call. Foster, offense. And that'll set him back five. Still second down. shy of the 25 here at the 26 yard line. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. The completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. The Bears on third down. They've hit on half of them. Five for ten. This is third and seven. Drop to throw. Toward the sideline. Did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got them both down, says the side judge. And that's good enough for a first down. I think this was a good signing by the Chicago Bears, picking up Marcus Wheaton from Pittsburgh. They had to do something to try and lessen the loss of Alshon Jeffrey. Injuries last year holding him to just three games, four catches. But the two years prior to that, he combined for 97 grabs. And this seemingly endless drive continues. And now whistles here and a flag down. Looked like someone got going a little early. That's going to set him back five yards. Still first down. And now for the offense, this is play number 11 here on this drive. Right, here we go. Back to throw again. And he's going to be wrapped up and driven down. Olivier Vernon in there to record another sack. Their sixth of the afternoon. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. Oh, long drive. The defense just cannot seem to catch a break and get off the field. shotgun he'll look to throw 
He leads this one for Howard. Give him two yards on that play. And they're going to be staring at a third and long here. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. The Bears on third down. They've converted six times and could use a seventh here. This will be third and a mile. Now back to throw. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked off by Landon Collins. Well, you're trailing. It's the fourth quarter, and you've got to throw the football. But the defense knows this, too. So they're just going to sit back, bring in an extra defensive back or two, the old nickel or dime strategy, Brandon, and wait for you to put that bad boy up for grabs. And this one winds up being intercepted. And the Giants ready to come out now. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him in the contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped in the contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> toe bash. I don't know about toe that. Bash, <laughs> Super toe. <laughs> They go counter, Perkins, and he'll get only a couple up to the 22. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation, and taking care of the football, paramount, and he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. Second down, here's Manning. To Shepard, complete over the middle. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. A very solid gain of 27. This is something you got to be wary of defensively. I mean, just because they're in the mode of trying to burn some clock doesn't mean they won't pass it. They got good yardage out of that one. Yeah, and really, when you're looking at it, now they've got a fresh set of downs. Look for second down. If they want to take another shot and try and loosen things up, that'd be the time to do it. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he might have got this across midfield, not by much. They'll mark it down at the 49. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who, who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying it around campus, right? Maybe the old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. Getting late in the fourth now, Charles. Two-minute warning just around the corner. Yeah, some teams just want to get to that spot, take a breath, and then come out and attack for the rest of the game. Now Perkins. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Time for a break. We'll come back to wrap this one up after this. So it's Giants football here as we welcome you back. And the scoreboard on their side, they're just looking to melt away these final couple of minutes and put this one in the left-hand column. They'll run it now out of the gun. And heavy contact. He is knocked down hard. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go.
The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. So they run it on second down. Now let's see what third down brings here for the offense. On the run, it's Perkins. And he's able to get the first here as he's taken down at the 25. And now with 1.52 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. Take this one down to about the 23-yard line. Ready now for second and nine. Double tight, double tight. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he'll keep it moving down to the 15-yard line. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. And the next snap coming inside the red zone here. Perkins on third down. And he's able to pick up the first down before he's tackled right at the 10. Give him a gain of four, able to convert, and that sets up first and goal now. I've got an idea. Let's skip racing to the airport at the end of this game. Let's go to the post-game press conference. I have a feeling that the quarterback of this winning team is going to be giving a whole lot of credit to the running game the offensive line. Yeah, I was just going to say the offensive line, yes, carrying the ball has been key, but those guys up front, they've made a lot of space. Well, just play after play after play on this long drive for the offense. Now it's the backup, Smith. And he finds Shepard. Touchdown, Giants. Sterling Shepard from 10 yards out. And the Giants add on to their lead. Is it okay if I break one of our rules, partner, which is to never call a game over until it's over? Because this certainly feels like it's over after that drive. Yeah, that was spirit crushing, wasn't it? And now you can—you just kind of felt the air go out of the balloon. Yeah, they were fighting so hard to stay in there, and they knew they had to stop them on that drive. But when they were unable to, I, I think you're exactly right. You could see them sag on their sideline, and I think this one might just be over. 
keep it on the ground. And he'll get blown up behind the line of scrimmage. Back at the six. So the defense gets the stop. I know it's situation to situation. Situation, but who has more pressure there, offense or de defense when they go for two? I, st I truly believe it's the defense has more pressure because the offense has an entire playbook wide open from the two yard. Line, you can run it, you can throw it. So defensively, I think most teams are going to be aggressive and force the issue and try and bring pressure. Rosas now to kick this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. They've lost this one. Their offense has struggled. Do they try to put together something here at the end just to take into next week? Yeah, sometimes teams want to do that and coaches want to. I remember one time I was on a team and we were losing late in a game like this and you knew it was lost. It was over, right? And the coach called a running play and pretty much said to everyone, I want to see something executed well before we get out of here. And that was the message to the team. Just something to build Just on. Just something to build on, get it done, and maybe we can look at that and say, we'll get better as we go forward. To the sideline, and wow, what a catch there. He doesn't get a lot, but he was able to get the feet down complete. Call it a one-yard gain on the play, and that'll make this a second down. Was that a receiver? <laughs> yeah, actually it was. It was a running back who was a receiver on the play. I think he's been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a the toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd run to ballet school. Got the toes down and stayed in bounds. Glennon. Caught. It's Cruz left side. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. That catch good for five. It's third down. And a nice gain of 21 yards. And he'll indeed get him to the line and spike it here to stop the clock. throw here on second and ten. That's caught by Meredith right side. And he'll get nothing out of that one. No gain that time on the completion and it'll be third down. They'll set up a throw. Glennon hit. He loses the football. It's out. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. And Charles, you know what coaches always tell us. We want to win our home game.
which we know we want to protect our home turf. They got that done in this one. Exactly right. When you start a season, everyone's goal. Win all of your home games, split your road games, and you're likely going to be in the playoffs. But when you win at home, boy, what a great feeling that is. You don't even mind if people are at your house when you get home after a win like that. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. The Giants are winners as we say so long from MetLife Stadium. Okay, just after this result, New York Giants have gone to fourth in the league, the seventh league on the Chicago have gone down to second now from the concept of loss.